Hey traders, Stephen here with TradersPlan.com. It's Thursday, May the 9th. Uh, the market's coming under pressure and looking at the futures, it's coming up under even more pressure. So is this the correction that we've finally been waiting on? Uh, we're gonna look at some, some evidence uh, to suggest one way or another. I think that obviously it looks like we're, we're in for a slightly deeper pullback than one of these, but that doesn't mean the sky is falling. I'm really more trying to look for opportunities than threats, but you do have to pay attention uh, to the overall evidence and everything's in front of you and try to be objective as possible. And I know that's hard. Um, so I did want to start with the S&P 500 before I move over to the NASDAQ. And by the way, we're also going to look at some pullback scans. We're going to look at some pullback scans, you know, how to scan for certain bars, certain setups, certain stocks. So you know, a lot of times in uh, market corrections, it's very easy. You know, what I'll find is I'll find my watch list will shrink because I'll have certain parameters. And once once lines start getting broke, I'll just start removing stocks off my watch list. But by the end, uh, you have a nice shorter list of really strong stocks. So we're going to look at uh, some of those parameters here in a minute. But, um, you know, right now, so far, the S&P 500 has only pulled back 3.5%. So it is right in line with these other pullbacks. There are a couple things that are different about it. One, it did touch the 50-day uh, moving average on Tuesday. You can see this this long wick kind of came down. It touched the green line, which is the 50-day moving average, and it moved up a little. But now it's looking like it's trying to come back down. So you know there could be a, a, a little uh, tugging and pulling going on right in this area. Uh, we'll see what happens, but. You have these two pullbacks right here, and what I was talking about a lot of times when you have a strong market and it's really gunning for the all-time high is it'll it'll break uh, that all-time high, and then that's when everyone will get sucked in, or at least all the weak holders, and that's when the pullback everybody's been waiting on will happen, and just the market does that. Like it's it's going to suck in the weak hands, and just you know the fear of missing out is going to get everybody, and then that's when it's going to pull back and frustrate everybody. So. You always got to be cautious about that, but that's exactly what happened. So the market, you know, just barely closed one or two days at an all-time high, or at least the S&P did, and then it pulled back. Now, this this rally, excuse me, this pullback has been different in a couple ways, and we're going to talk about that uh, as this webinar goes on. But at least on this third pullback, this is the first time the S&P 500 has touched the 50-day moving average. You can see these pullbacks. They broke the 20-day EMA, which is the red line, for a day or two, uh, and then just continued their uptrend. Well, this, you know, is is now under the 20-day EMA, and that's also something you want to watch. You want to watch is, you know, for, for a rally that was living above the 20-day EMA, is it going to start living below the 20-day EMA? And if it is, you just need to be more cautious and understand that we've had a, a huge, huge run. Uh, straight off the bottom and the market does have to digest these gains. It has to digest these gains. It's not going to go up forever. So don't try to overplay the pullbacks. You know, like I said, I am looking for opportunities, but don't try to always feel like you have to be buying something every couple of days or every week because, uh, because you don't want to give all these gains on the way back. But right now, I think I'm looking at not just this 50 day SMA, but that is kind of a, another support zone. Uh, but what I think is important, I want to show you this. I do like, uh, I'm going to look at the volume by price. I do like the 50 day moving average, not as an end all be all, but it's just a simple stop loss indicator tool. It tells you what kind of trending market you're in, right? And again, you know, the, the market could close below it and come right back. You know, there is whipsaws in the market, but it's just a nice, easy line. And I like moving averages because they work. The strongest rally is going to be above the 20. You know, the more intermediate rallies are going to be above the 50. Uh, we've been above the 50 this whole time and now the, the run has gone a long time. So just if the uh, 50 day breaks, it, it, that doesn't really to me mean anything, you know, that it's going to come all the way down here. So when I look at volume by price and what this means is these are in this whole segment right here going all the way back. Uh, this is a 12 month chart. Uh, most of the shares were traded. You can see in this zone right here. So you have between 2700 and 2800, you can see how much volume was traded because you can see a lot of, a lot of choppiness action in here. Um, so I would assume that the market, if we get like a decent correction, you know, pulls back even further. This is the zone right here. If I could draw a circle, it could find support in. So 
I'm just showing this to show you that even if we get a deeper pullback and it goes in a correction mode and it breaks this 200 day moving average line, it could easily just find support somewhere under this, somewhere in the zone. Call it this, whoops, sorry about that. So, you know, look at this little pullback pivot right here, right? It could come into this whole zone. So just if it starts to fall, you don't automatically have to think it's going to come all the way down here because there were a lot of shares being traded between 2800 and 2700 and there could be some support in that area. So that's why I like to look at the volume and price sometimes, you know, in a non, when the market starts to go into non-trending mode and moving averages aren't as valuable, you want to look at other things like where are the potential support zones. Um, so I'm looking at that right now, but so far we've only had a three and a half percent pull back this was you know they both of these were three to five we'll just kind of see how it acts around this zone but i think right now you need to be need to be uh managing your watch list and trying to find more opportunities and that doesn't mean you have to find an opportunity today and buy something today i'm just saying you know when in a strong market my watch list will get up to about 40 stocks and then i have a short short list of about 10 uh that 10 i send to my paid subscribers every week so when the when the market starts to correct pull back my watch list my big watch list i'll shrink that down to 20 because i will start to get rid of all the stocks that start to break support because why have those continue to be on your watch list when there are stronger stocks on your watch list right so you're, you're continuing to farm the list um, so if we go over to so this is one you know little thing that the market has done differently than it did on these two pullbacks now, I, I sent this chart, I added it to my private Facebook group the other day, and, and here's something else to look at that is kind of interesting. I know this chart is ugly and there's a lot on it, but follow me for a second. This is a chart of the NASDAQ. So the purple line that I have overlaying it is the VIX. So again, I'm looking for what is different about this pullback than the previous two to give me a little bit of support to say it's either going to go up or maybe there's something deeper happening. Well, okay, so same thing happened with the NASDAQ. It broke to an all-time high, closed a couple of days, and pulled back. But you can see on these two pullbacks that I can match right here, this blue line is the VIX, around 16 and a half. These two pullbacks, the VIX never got above 16, much more than 16, okay? So there was almost, I don't really like to use support and resistance on the VIX, but it just, there wasn't a lot of fear coming in. This pullback has been no greater than these two pullbacks in the VIX, the fear gauge, got all the way up to 20, you know, 19 and a half, 20. So that's telling me that there is a ton more fear in the market up here on this pullback that, that from a price, you know, decline is no greater than these two so far, but there's a lot more VIX, right? There's a lot more fear coming in. I mean, you know, the S&P, a lot more puts coming in. So it's just something that makes me go, huh, okay, that's different. And you, you've heard me a lot of times say, a lot of times when you buy a stock or you're buying pullbacks, the first two, and this is, you know, kind of an IBD rule, the first two pullbacks or the first two consolidations have your greatest chance of success. Usually the third one is, is there is not a third times a charm uh, type of rule when you are buying pullbacks or when you're buying breakouts. Uh, so this is looking interesting to me. So just, just kind of keeping an eye on it. Now, if we look at the Russell 2000, this is not near as strong as anything. It has had some really, really strong days as of lately, but you know, I am really interested to see how this one plays out because this, the small caps never got to an all time high. You know, I, I could draw a trend line right here and say it broke out. I could draw a trend line right here and say it held the breakout zone and is slowly grinding higher. But if this first one breaks right here, this 1566 pivot on the Russell 2000, which probably looking at the futures, it's going to open right at that level. It's going to break this next one and that's going to break this next one. And it just could just run through them very, very quickly. And that's what happens. You have all these levels. Right, they could just get picked off and just kind of pick up steam like a you know like a magnet. Like the, the price is going to run through these. So you just have to keep in mind a lot of times when you see you know these little levels right here, and you say, okay, I have one potential place 
where the market could run through it. If there's a couple more that are quickly to it, one has to expect that it's going to run through those as well. Just kind of run all the stops, scare everybody out. So right now I'm looking at the Russell Futures and it's opening at 1566.40, which is, which is right here. So we'll see how the day goes on. Um, but that's looking really interesting. Now, if we look at, let's, let's go look at the short term breath. Um, and I've been showing you this chart for a couple weeks now. So this is nothing new, but you know, the percent of stocks above the 20 day moving average are now at 34%. You can see right here in the S&P 500, 34% of the S&P 500 stocks are above the 20 day moving average. I'd say we're out of rally mode. Uh, for sure, because you really want it above 70, above 60 is okay. Anything above that is really strong. But if you notice, you know, the market, the price action peaked, you know, a week, maybe six, seven trading days ago. The breath peaked on April 5th, a month ago. A lot of times breath will peak before market action. Now, I don't put as much weight in the short term breath as I do the long term breath. Long term breath is getting weaker, but it's still okay at the moment. But sometimes this is, this is just something to pay attention to. When you see this happen, you're like, huh, okay. So what I typically will do when I see this, I'll say, okay, if the price is going up, I'm still going to play the price. I'm still going to be buying stocks. I'm still going to be doing that. When the price breaks and this, this breadth has already weakened, then I'm going to start to really pay attention, right? Then I'm going to start to say, okay, I have this secondary indicator that already had a negative divergence. And now I have, you know, the price that is starting to break. And by the way, this is the third pullback. And the market just hit an all-time high. So now I'm looking at all the evidence. And on this pullback, the VIX was a little bit higher than the previous two pullbacks. So I, I think, if anything, the market is just going to take a pause. I would be really surprised if it just pulled right back and shot straight back up. I just think it needs a breather. And again, a breather does not need, mean another 10% decline. I'm trying to stay bullish as long as I can because the market, even though it's looking like it's starting to crack, was still strong, but look, now in technology, you only have, uh, this is weakened very quickly, you only have 29% of technology stocks uh, or in the XLK that are above the 20-day EMA, right? You can see, you, you want it above 70, you can see all the, all the weakness that has started to happen and all this, and, and energy is the weakest, so oil um even though oil i think popped yesterday looking at the futures it's it's down but oil has struggled lately but you know what what one thing has frustrated me about oil is you have um you know oil has been on a pretty strong run with the market this year but the stocks i don't think have participated in a way they should have and i always want the stocks to out outperform the commodity that they uh track with and when they don't when the commodity is outperforming the stocks, typically I'll just take a pass. Uh, materials are weak, utilities are weak, so you just have a lot of overall weakness. Um, and this is, you know, nothing crazy, but you know, if we look at these two pullbacks right here, right, we have the two pullbacks on the rally that we previously looked at. The breath on this pullback is already weaker. Uh, than the previous two pullbacks because you can see that this pullback got to about 38% You know, and we might be splitting hairs here. This pullback got 50% We're already at 34% so the breadth is a little weaker as well on this pullback that it is on the others so if we go to the longer term breadth um, We still have 60. This is the percent of S&P 500 stocks above the 200 day moving average I, I try to pay attention to this a little bit more just because the longer the indicator, the longer time, the less whipsaws you have. Um, so still have 66% of stocks above the 200 day moving average. I would say that is still bullish, right? The pri It's hard to be negative. I just, you can see the way this line is curling and it's curling quickly. I think it just, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this kind of breaks this and we just kind of go into a pause or corrective type of mode. But again, I'm also keeping my options very, very open uh, and I'm sticking with my positions as long as they're above the stop. Uh, just because there have been so many times in this rally that I'm like, hey, this is the time, the market's gonna pull back, boom, it just you know shakes everybody out and then just keeps on going, right? So I'm trying to keep my options open in case that happens. I'm just seeing some secondary indicators that that are showing a little bit more that we are due for probably a little deeper pullback than the previous two. 
just in case I'm trying to make. So if we look at, you know, the 10 sectors in the last one week, the last five trading days, healthcare um, has really kind of held in there. And I think the reason that is, is because if you look at the scooter ranking, this is kind of a 12 month technical ranking by stock charts. Uh, it's one of the weakest. So I don't think this is holding in there because of strength of an aggressive sector. I just think it's just, it got so oversold. It's really just bounced off the bottom, but you can see staples are up there. They're kind of holding in. Uh, discretionary is holding up there, but you can see uh, discretionary and technology have a strong 12 month scooter ranking, but you can see technology is down here at the bottom. But utilities is also at the bottom too. Materials is at the bottom. So you have commodities um, not looking so hot. Gold does not look like a good looking chart. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to completely roll over, but gold doesn't look strong. Oil is looking suspect and the dollar just continues. So um, I, I think that that makes sense for a lot of things in the material sector. Now, I really just want to look at price and breadth and I wanted to kind of go into a scan and just kind of show you a couple things. Um, you know how what I'm constantly doing during pullbacks is I'm constantly I I guarantee you pretty much every day during a pullback or correction, I'm getting rid of a handful of stocks that are on my watch list and I'm trying to add more that are showing strength. So I'll kind of show you a couple places uh, that you really, I think, want to look when the market is just showing a little bit of weakness. Doesn't mean we're going to go into bear market, but just going to show a little bit of weakness. Uh, so there is this uh, bullish engulfing um, scan sometimes I look at, and it's, it's just a very, very simple scan. Let me kind of run this scan, and I'll kind of show you what the bullish engulfing is. And I, I do have a paid version of stock charts. I don't know. You can take this scan code right here. I, I cannot remember. If, I, I think this is a, a predefined scan in their scan list. So even if you have a basic, um, you know, subscription of stock, stock charts, uh, you can have this. But this is just something you can, you know, run probably on any platform you're on. So all, all they're doing is say, okay, I'm looking for, you know, a certain amount of volume in a daily bullish engulfing pattern with a scooter value greater than 70. So what that is, is that that's their uh, technical ranking uh, based on all the stocks in the universe. So they're looking for the top 30% um, and a close of greater than 10 bucks. So they're trying to weed out all the um, all the penny stocks. So really all they're looking for is a daily bullish engulfing candle um, in the top 30% of stocks and they're weeding out any stocks below 10 bucks. So what I like to do sometimes is when I see these, I'm like, when the market is pulling back, I'm like, okay, I want to look at the strong stocks and I want to look at them in pullbacks and I want to watch them, you know, create a bullish engulfing candle. Really what I like to see is at a major support area at a, at a major moving average. So just kind of look at this example and I'll walk through the definition of a bullish engulfing if you don't know. So really what a bullish engulfing is, as you can see, you know, Hence, engulfing, what it is, is it will engulf, it's a two candle setup. So it will basically swallow the body of the previous candle. So you have this bar right here, and then you have the next candle will undercut the, the bottom of the body. It doesn't necessarily have to be the bottom of the wick, but it has to be the bottom of the body right here, and it will close above it, right? So you can see it kind of engulfs the whole body of the previous candle. So really it's a bullish reversal that just, just kind of really, uh, takes out the previous, uh, activity from the previous day. So what I like to do sometimes is I like to look at a scan like this and say, okay, this is a little too steep a run for me personally to buy right here. I mean, it's already tested. This is, it's probably going to base. But if this happens at, you know, maybe a cluster moving average or maybe if this happens at the 50 day moving average, you know, that might be a good opportunity to buy a bounce off the 50 day. All right. So let's just kind of run through these. I haven't looked at these before this. Some might be good. Some might not. Um, okay. CLTX. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, boy, this is a fast mover. Actually, now I'm probably going to add this to my watch list. So see, it's just kind of simple. And, and before I get into this, I mean, you have all the stocks in the universe and this just came up with just a handful of stocks creating a bullish event. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take their scan and I could take it one step further and say, I want this bullish event to happen close to the 50 day moving average. So I could probably add something to say within 
5% above the 50 day moving average so I can get it or 6 or 7% so I could really narrow it down within support. But look right here. So you have a double right straight off the bottom. Um, went from basically nine bucks to 19 bucks. So this is, um, this defines what I call a fast mover. And I like fast moving stocks, man. I want stock that can blow through your first trigger, uh, very, very quickly. So, and now it's pulling back. So since it made such a big run, it's, it's not likely going to find support, uh, at, you know, the first moving average. So, but now it's kind of right at this 200 day moving average. And I don't really like it, the fact that the 200 day moving average is sloping. But here's something I'm also noticing, right? It, to me, this is a bullish setup and anything below, you know, yesterday's candle, you just get out the way. Uh, but what, what's interesting about this is that you have a uh, one volume bar right here. So you have a, a, an above average accumulation pop came down and tested the 200 day moving average, came down again and then found support and swallowed the previous candle. It actually looks like it swallowed the previous two candles right at potential support in above average volume. That's a pretty decent setup. Now I'm looking at the futures right now and I'm not liking what I'm seeing. So I might just throw this on a watch list because I think this is a fast moving stock that so far has found support and I'll just watch and see what happened. But you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna probably buy this today if the market is opening down one percent. Like I might just see how it reacts relative to the market. And that's another thing. I'm always trying to find out which stocks in my watch list are outperforming relative to the overall market. So that's a decent idea or different decent one for the watch list. This uh, Canadian National Rail Comp National, excuse me, National Rail Company. Um, I don't really like this setup. You got two pullbacks, third one, I guarantee you this is going to base. Uh, if I were a betting man, I would say this is going to base. It needs more time. This isn't really down near support anywhere, so it's just a setup I would just pass on. I can quickly look at it and say, you know what, it's not near support, I'll pass. Um, well, this is Cormark Holding. Never heard of this company, but that is one heck of a candle. Uh, it was up 10% yesterday. Uh, when the market uh, was not, you know, wasn't that strong of a day. So, but look, look at, it just absolutely blew through all these levels. Look at, it blew through this level, right? Picked off this level and picked off this level all in one day. So this is a lot of strength. I might investigate this company more because I have no idea. It's in the consumer staples. I might investigate this a little bit more, but it was up huge yesterday on big volume. It might have been an earnings day. Um, but if you look at it, this is a stock that you want to, uh, if it rallies, you might want to be on board. And if it starts to fall, like just the 50 day moving average, you could just get out of the way. Uh, so I might keep that uh, just something to look at. E-G-A-N. Um, this isn't something that I really, really like. Went from five to 12. I don't, Huge gap down, huge gap up. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I don't see this, you know, it's pulled back from 1275 to 950. Has found support around the 200 day moving average. That still is curling down. It's just, it's, it's not, it doesn't stand out to me. Like the, you want the bullish engulfing to stand out amongst the previous candles and this doesn't. So, so far, I think I have two better options than that. Um, this is another one that, uh, MFC, Manulife Financial, uh, it looked, it, it looks like it's in pullback mode. Yes, it engulfed the previous candle. It's close to support, but it just, it doesn't, you know, the, the candle doesn't stand out to me versus the previous candle. So I want it to be, you know, something that, that really stands out and this does not. So I'm just going to just pass on it, right? You can run through these pretty quickly if you have a small list. Um, this looks kind of interesting. So ramp again, I don't never heard of some of these companies, but you have a really strong run, almost a double, and then you have a nice little cup with handle. So, I mean, that I, I could see that clear as day. It, the, and this might be an earnings day. Earnings day might have been yesterday. Uh, some of these all might be earnings day. 
Because what I'm finding is in the last week, most of the strongest uh, daily bars are on earnings. Um, but that can be a double-edged sword. So you have a clear cup with handle right here, a reversing candle right here, not all the way to the top, but it just punched back through. I'd like to see more volume on this. Um, I might keep this, but kind of looking... Yeah, I might just kind of keep it on here. So we have three. We're just kind of trying to shrink the list a little bit. Um, big move, but it's, yes, it engulfed at the 20-day moving average, but it hasn't really found maybe once. But to me, this has already made a big run. I, if I were a betting man, I would say this is going to consolidate more. And it's way but in my opinion, the 20-day moving average has not historically found support. Um, I would bet it would come down to here. So I'm just going to pass on that. Uh, the Aerospace and Defense ETF. Um, XAR, so I guess it doesn't weed out ETFs this scan, but, you know, I'm, I'm honestly not a big fan of, of individual industry ETFs like this, just because I'd rather have something that's faster mover. Yes, money, excuse me, I had a yawn, money can go into defensive names and defensive type stocks, but... Overall, they're going to mostly move with the market. So, in my opinion, there's just faster moving stocks out there. And when I say fast moving, I want something that's going to hit my target one or has the potential within a day or two. And why I do that is because when you're in a strong rally and you don't know where the top is, you don't want to be in a slow, slower moving investment or an investment that's going to move in line with the market because it could take longer to hit your target one. So once you hit your target one, then you got a free trade. Then you can let the second half run, right? Free trade. But if it takes a long time to hit that target one, I think that is a ton more risk. You're holding a ton more risk by being in a slower moving stock because you are going to be completely vulnerable to whatever the market's going to do. Whereas if you have a faster moving stock like this, like this. I think that based on this action, it's not out of uh, the realm of possibilities for this to buck the trend of the overall market. Because you will have some ten, some stocks, maybe 20-25% buck the trend of the overall market. So uh, that's what I'm looking for. So we went through this bullish engulfing uh, scan and it's very, very simple. And again, you can add something to this, you know, code right here. If you like it, you know, you're only looking for bullish engulfing candles within 8% above the 50-day moving average. That way, you're going to just really shrink the list and only find one or two bullish engulfing patterns that are right at support that you're looking for a potential bounce. Run it once a day, and boom, you have a nice little pullback scan uh, because we found a couple ideas. And out of all three of these, let me just kind of look at these again. I'm just trying to pick my favorite. I mean, if I were to have you, I don't know. Like, I, I, I kind of like this, and I kind of like this for a couple reasons. One, I think the pullback is a little bit deeper. It's already undercut this, and it reversed right at the long-term moving average. You can see it's hit resistance at the 20. This could roll over today. I don't know. Uh, so if this falls under 14.55, this isn't my favorite anymore. But you just kind of honestly, now that you have a couple ideas... I think you really just want to watch them play out when you have some some sell-offs in the overall market. Now I'm going to look at these three. I might put them all on my watch list and just say, okay, which ones have held up the best when the market's selling off? Then you have your best candidate for when we, you know, the market starts to rally back up. So what I might do um, is, you know, put all three of these on the watch list, and then we could see what they do for the week relative to the overall market. And then, you know, you can, we can kind of learn from it. So more of a case study type of thing. But again, um, let me know if you have any questions. I really just kind of wanted to show you a pullback scan. Look at the price action. Look at the breadth. And I, I think at, the, at this point in time, you really have to be open to anything uh, can happen. You know, we can reverse today. We can find support today. Or we can get deeper. And I talked about in that 2700, 2800 um, area in the S&P 500 where all those shares were traded. So uh, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.